Okay, now for discontinuous variation, we try to, we try to, you can say, um, we try to show the data of a population, the data of a population in the form of a graph. in the form of a graph. So uh, we try to show the data of a population in the form of a graph. Let's suppose, let's talk about the blood group. Blood group. Suppose there is a population of 100,000 people. 100,000 people and you want to make a graph. You have four varieties, A, B, A, B, and O. Now, you can get a variable graph like this. A, you may get B, A, B, and O. What is on the y-axis? It's the number of people. Number of people. What? is this graph representing this graph representing that majority of the people uh, a large majority of the people is uh, are showing the uh, the dominant phenotype and or a recessive phenotype or a recessive phenotype the intermediate phenotypes seems to be followed the intermediate one seems to be followed a bit less intermediate seems to be followed a bit less. Okay, this kind of uh, this kind of graph is called as bar graph. And remember that we are asked about a question that how we differentiate between the uh, discontinuous and continuous variation. First of all, remember that. The type of graph that we make in the discontinuous variation is the bar graph, while there is another type of graph that we use in the uh, continuous variation. Then we can differentiate with the examples of the uh, with, with the examples, like um, the, what kind of phenotypes would be um, uh, would be falling in the category of discontinuous and what kind in the continuous variation. And then uh, we will see that uh, in the discontinuous variation. Uh, there are very few phenotypes between the two extremes, very few phenotypes. And another very important thing is, very important thing, that discontinuous variations, discontinuous variations, discontinuous, vari I would say discontinuously varying characters, discontinuously varying characters are not influenced or changed by the environment by the environment they are purely genetical purely genetical you cannot change the blood group due to an environmental reason you cannot change that you can roll your tongue or not due to an environmental reason so discontinuously varying characters are not influenced or changed by the environment they are purely genetical so this is another difference let's uh, start discussing the continuous variation so that we can um, we can study about the we can study about the uh, difference properly now, in a continuous variation, I gave you an idea, a, a slight idea in the previous class that in continuous variation, uh, we have, we have, okay, let me write a proper definition here so that you can write it down. When a character, a large variety of phenotypes, a large variety, of phenotypes between 
dominant and recessive or you can say between the two extremes between dominant and recessive phenotype in a population remember in the beginning i clearly said that these features are discussed in a population we do not discuss these features or the variation or the variety uh, in a single person so let's say height i gave you an example of height in the previous uh, when we were discussing the previous uh, in the previous lesson height let's suppose the recessive height is 4 feet and the dominant height is 6 feet now these appear to be only two phenotypes but they are they, these are just recessive and dominant when you would start uh, uh, saying that 4.1, 4.0 is, is a different phenotype, 4.1 is a different phenotype, 4.2 is different, and 6.5.9 and 6.0 are feet are different heights. Then we say that this character, the height is one of those characters that is not similar, not similar in between the between the people sitting in one room sitting in one room so uh, we go basically this rule can be followed if we rather than uh, feet we convert it into centimeter. Now, if you go and measure the height of all the people at your home, you can easily see that in centimeters, there is a quite difference. And um, if you try to find out the centimeter, I guess the four feet is equal to some 122 point something centimeter. And six feet is 180 centimeter. 122 centimeter is four feet and six feet is the uh, six feet is the 180 centimeter and obviously we do not limit ourselves to that we say 122.0 is something else 122.1 is something else and so on so on so it means that we are just we are just um, uh, we are just uh, seeing that right from 122 feet right from 122 feet uh, no sorry 122.0 centimeter till 180.0 centimeter you have a lots of phenotypes between the two dominant and recessive ones that is called as the um, th that is called as <clears throat> the continuous variation now when we talk about continuously varying character continuously varying character there is a large influence of these features they are influenced by the environment clearly influenced by the environment how let's say there are there are twins there are twins and they are being reared in different uh, regions one has been fed very well and the other one is almost starving due to some reason now these two things are clearly going to affect the uh, the, the growth of the twin now in this case not only height but uh, but the weight which is again the continuously varying character height and weight both are continuously varying character and then they are actually they are actually uh, you can say um, they are actually counted in the continuously varying trait and they are influenced by the environment 
influenced by the environment. So we say that they are 50% genetically influenced and 50% uh, influenced by the environment. And you can include IQ in it. You can include eye color in it. Sometimes the eye color also. Your voice is gone. Character is not necessarily included, um, not necessarily involves the humans. It can be involving many other um, plants and animals. If it comes to the graph, then remember that we make a histogram. What are the features of a histogram? Features of a histogram that we use the bars in it, but bars merge. Bars merge with, with, uh, merge with each other. And in the histogram, we can make groups of we can make groups. Just look at this. Suppose the first group that you make, let's say one, uh, the first group, okay, I would not write on the y axis, uh, uh, on x axis. On x axis, what are you going to do? You are going to mention the groups of phenotypes. Suppose 122.0 to 124.9, then 125.0 to 129.9. Then from 130.0 to 134.9, then 135.0 to 139.9. Now, why am I why am I creating a difference always? Why am I not finishing it at 125.0, 130.0? Remember that in uh, in this particular histogram, the graphs the graphs needs need to be merging, and this merging can only be representing if you uh, if you make the groups like this. Now, in in a histogram, now this over here you would mention number of sample or number of people. Number of people following this height would be uh, they, they they are like in this uh, number, then you would uh, slowly and gradually you would start in, uh, increasing and at the middle point you would start decreasing it now with the help of this particular graph what you can what you can uh, represent here please be very careful dominant and recessive phenotypes recessive phenotypes are shown the least the least number of people are showing the recessive phenotypes. They are showing the recessive phenotypes. Then the, the uh, are also now this is this one is the recessive, the first group, and the last group is going to be dominant. The people are following people people that are showing the Recessive or dominant phenotypes. Uh, you can say uh, majorly followed, majorly followed phenotypes are uh, central intermediate. Like those which are exactly at the central shade of something, but remember that the these phenotypes uh, you can you can also say that all the phenotypes before the dominant one and after the recessive one they are followed more than they are they are uh, you can say um, they are shown or they are fo followed more than the dominant and recessive phenotypes it, this is totally different from the recess uh, from the discontinuously varying characters in them the recessive phenotypes were were followed mostly recessive and dominant and the intermediate phenotypes were followed less so it is totally opposite you can write this as, the, as a difference as well 
Is that clear? Yes. Hello? Your voice is gone, I think. Okay. When did I uh, disconnect and when it got reconnected? Um, I think it's fine. It like stopped when you said like phenotype. But you understood everything? Yeah. Okay. So the last sentence I would say over here that the phenotypes that are mostly followed or shown by the people um, the discontinuously varying phenotype like the large number of people are following the dominant or recessive and intermediate are shown less while in the continuously varying character the intermediate ones are shown the most and the uh, the extreme ones or dominant and recessive ones are least so we we say that there is another indication that the uh, this is called as bell graph so this is another indication of the graph that um, like let's say you um, uh, if you see this type of graph in the paper always remember that you need to uh, remember that according to your syllabus this graph can only be shown by the continuously varying features continuously varying characters okay yeah that's clear so all right now moving ahead uh, investigate and describe the examples of continuous and discontinuous duration this is basically going to be an experiment uh, in which we would be uh, measuring the heights of the uh, students in the class and then showing the conclusion i have described already what is mutation and then mutation causes the new alleles there are some features the mutations are random and now and we have already discussed that my mutation meiosis random mating and random fertilization are source of genetic variation please confirm this do you remember this this one meiosis mutation random, meiosis random are sources of genetic variation yeah okay mm -hmm. so the last thing that we need to discuss over here that why mutations occur did i discuss that with you mutagens I don't think we've really talked about mutation as a whole. Um, no, basically, when we were talking about the allele formation, I told you that the DNA is made of nucleotides. Yeah. And the nucleotides appear as a code, code for protein synthesis. And if the nucleotides are, if the nucleotides are changed, that is called as mutation. Basically, the the we need to know the mutation that we need to know is a sudden change in gene a sudden change in the sequence of in the sequence of nucleotides a sudden change in the sequence of nucleotides uh, uh, and what what is going to be the result consequently it can affect it can affect the amino acid sequence and arrangement amino acid sequence and arrangement in the proteins this is what the mutation really is there are factors let's suppose you have this is this gene a g c t a G C T and it is going to translate into a protein it is going to translate into a protein now what happens that suppose the mutation happens and the mutation changes the a into G now instead of a G C T a G C T you have a G C T G G C T and this is going to change the protein sometimes they change the protein and sometimes they don't 
and i also told you that if the genes mutate sometime they even increase the fitness of the organism they even increase the fitness of the organism by um, can increase the fitness of the organism by making it able to it able to uh, tackle environmental challenges environmental challenges and sometime it is lethal it can lead to death so this is what the mutation now what are the reasons what can change what can change the nucleotide sequence or what can bring the mutation remember there are two types of things <clears throat> only one is discussed over here one thing that they are telling is the mutation is totally random what is the meaning of it one meaning is it can appear at any nucleotide one meaning of this is that is it can appear at any nucleotide the other meaning of totally random means that it can appear in any organism anytime anywhere without the will of the organism the organisms cannot decide what kind of uh, what kind of uh, mutation is going to appear in them the organisms do not decide and decide that okay this one this organism is going to show a mutation and this mutation would kill him but this organism is going to show a mutation and this mutation would make it fitter so what are what can change what is causing the mutation these are called as ionizing radiations ionizing radiations or like uh, you can say alpha beta gamma rays alpha beta gamma rays and then you can say um, even cathode rays uh, ultraviolet rays uv rays these kinds of radiations they basically can change the nucleotide sequence suddenly and this would lead to uh, a different character of our characters they are molecular forms meaning that they, uh, when when they uh, when whenever we say uh, what are our characters we should know that our characters are uh, the proteins our characters are the proteins so you can simply say that mutation can change a protein a gene which consequently which consequently changes a protein in other words you can say character so mutation is this thing got it yes all right so now this is about the mutation moving on to the next one i was trying to i was planning to start the biotechnology but it suddenly flashed in my mind and now i am going to uh, a, a particular concept and a particular you can say um, past paper based thought came into my mind it just flashed into my mind and uh, i am about to start the selection although the very next one is the adaptive features but first let's work on the selection 
okay what is a selection can you tell me what's the selection any any concept you have i not necessarily biological like natural selection you can tell me about any other selection not natural selection um just selection is like when something is uh, chosen for a specific yes. task for a specific task or something is chosen because of specific quality specific feature suppose you you enter into a mall there are 10 brands right 10 brand shops right in front of you these shops all have a very large board of brand like let's say there is uh, gucci there is dolce, dolce and gabbana there is like uh, i'm just forgetting that brand i like that very much anyways whatever so we actually know two to three brands not more than that so let's say a large number of armani there is armani there is like you know, many things so now these kinds of different brands are right in front of you you go to one of them why you suddenly it it just jumps into your mind and you say no i would go to this one why you have some features that you like the most there is the selection right so it's a personal selection when it comes to the natural selection it basically is natural selection is basically the phenomena the phenomena of organisms being selected organisms being selected by the nature based on their phenotypes this is called as selection now what is the meaning of selection would the nature give them money would the nature give them a reward would the nature give them a medal no the nature you can say being selected being selected means an organism an organism is successfully is successfully tackling or overcoming the challenges overcoming the challenges uh, overcoming the challenges of environment of environment remember that okay i will write one more thing then i'll tell you what are the challenges being selected meaning an organism is successfully ta tackling or overcoming the challenges of environment and able to transfer its genetic material to next generation. This is genetic material to next generation. This is called as fitness. Fitness that is not like you just escaped your death. No, it's not fitness. It's maybe luck it's maybe a chance maybe you have escaped from a predator because that predator got another predator so there is only that maybe only a chance the real fitness the fitness certificate 
is the offsprings that are going to be produced after the successful reproduction. Let me repeat my sentence. The real fitness certificates are those offsprings which are going to be produced after the after the successful course of reproduction. So fitness is being able to produce organism or being able to transfer the genetic material to the next generation. There is the fitness. Coming to the challenges, what are the challenges of an environment? What are the challenges an organism would face? A challenges, basically these challenges in other words are called as selection pressures. Selection pressure. Or you can say these are factors of uh, natural selection. Fact factors of natural selection. What are these? Let's say number one, predator. Predator is one of the biggest feature. If an organism can escape it, it's considered as fitter. But if an organism has been captured, no more transfer of genetic material. You must know that if an organism is not selected, it is written, this particular sentence written in, is written in the advanced books, in the higher level books, that if an organism is not selected, its genetic material, its genetic material would be deleted from the population. Deleted from the population, meaning that it would be clearly removed from the population if an organism is not selected or is unfit. So it means that we would automatically assume that that organism's genetic material would, you must remember that an unfit genetic material, unfit genetic material would be gradually, material is going to be gradually removed to be gradually removed from removed from the population like they this genetic material would no more be available to be passed to the next generation there is the end of natural selection and nature is really straightforward in its rules it's really straightforward some things are shown to us like very positive sides of nature. Nature has really, really harsh and hard sides. It can really become a, a beast. So there is a fact that the natural selection can let an organism live and it leads an organism to death. So let's say predator. Predator could be then the second thing that is very important is environmental change Environmental change by environmental change. I don't mean a per permanent change. I mean a short time change Let's suppose let's suppose this kind of change is called as fluctuation Let's suppose that uh, in an ocean a fish is not able to and it's a fact it's a fact a fish is not able to um, tolerate a change in the temperature. So if a fish is <clears throat> uh, if a fish is not able to tolerate the changes that are occurring in, uh, around it, it means that it is not fit enough to live in that environment. Now there are one or two ways. Fish cannot tolerate tolerate one or two ways either migrate immediately if you are saved or die that's a simple thing there was a time in pakistan here when we were we were kids 
uh, I'm talking about 1998 to 2000s. Uh, we were very uh, fond of bringing like there there were there were um, uh, some vendors, street vendors, who used to have fish uh, on their like uh, fish with them, and uh, those fish the kids uh, used to bring uh, used to take their home to pet them, and um, almost every time every time when you ask about when you ask about the fish after two to three days almost every time um, the news that that was given to us that the the fish died and we were so innocent we started blaming the uh, vendor that he's uh, he's um, selling us unfit fish those fish which are not even able to survive at our home but it is a fact it is a fact that the biggest mi mistake those children did is uh, they they did not know that uh, the fish cannot survive in the changing water it has to be provided the same water from which it came out uh, any other factor Wait, so, let's suppose so the, uh, fish, the, the fish has to be supplied the same water like please what you mean like uh, sea sea water right that right not like specifically the same water the the fish if you are if you are taking the fish from the fresh water yeah then it should be it should be taken care of extremely because uh, if you if any of your food is leading to um, high salt in the in the water in your home uh, in the aquarium of your home then believe me the fish going to die Secondly, the temperature of water has to be kept very, very, you can say that in a very, very narrow limit, very narrow limit. The fish cannot do homeostasis. Just let, let me simply say that. Wait, so we studied that during the homeostasis, we can adjust our bodies. Mm -hmm. So, for example, like in an extreme circumstance, like you take a shark, right? You take it out from the ocean and you put it in a river or... A a lake or something so what would happen it would die like straight away if you take it from the ocean and if you, yeah it would die most of the time i have never seen and i have never read about any fish who has been taken from which has been taken like, taken from the ocean and put uh, and the uh, people put them into the regular water fresh water and it survived it would die same thing would happen when you take a fi fish from the fresh water. So they don't have ability to uh, tolerate the fluctuation. You might have some experience about the fish. Meaning? Is that right? You are asking like you, you might have some uh, you might have uh, pet some fish or you might have seen some fish like uh, like this. Yeah, I just didn't realize that some fish are dying. Maybe fish switch the water and mm. they die. They, they it has they to be taken care something. of very. Mm, no, 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 no. This is this is the point, and you are you are very right in thinking that we assume that the animal is going to behave in the same way that uh, just like us. If if I am going to um, going to take bath from from the cold water, my body would immediately start adjusting it, and in the in in a in a very small time. Uh, To the warm water, there is a very high chance that it would die because it cannot adapt. It cannot adjust. So that that is a fact that if a fish, if the environment is changed, the fish would die. So that is another challenge of the nature. In the, you know, let me tell you. The shark is called as a living fossil. You know why? In the ocean in the deep ocean there is no condition ever changed since the beginning of beginning of life the water 
is so surprising fluid that in the deep water there is nothing changed compared to the conditions of the ancient uh, ancient times now all the organisms in the deep ocean are they are not adjusted they are just living there they are not adjusting there the ocean is letting them live why it does not fluctuate its conditions the temperature doesn't change the ph doesn't change many other things they don't don't change so they survive if you change the temperature of the shark it would die so that's the point that those organisms are selected now you can see how much environment can influence on the selection if i am living in the desert my body has to adjust with the extremes because the day would be extremes and the night would be also extremely cold but if you put such an organism who is not able to adjust the, the it has to do three things either migrate number two just dive into the sand deep into the sand the temperature doesn't change there deep into the sand or maybe die so those the the change in the temperature or ch environmental change is also a selection pressure then there could be like any uh, the predator environmental change then the availability of water how much longer an organism can survive without water that is something you can clearly see between different kinds of organisms suppose you can see this uh, between the organisms living in the desert between the organisms living in the um, living uh, in a, a water rich area uh, in the organisms that live uh, on the poles because if they require fresh water then it is barely available uh selection pressures and you can bring more let's suppose uh you can even bring more selection pressures um anything that challenges the uh, living style of the organism is considered as uh, is considered as challenge selection pressure so you can talk about anything okay for plants let's say we are not able to the plants are not able to defend themselves against a bacterium against an infection yes infection diseases it's another challenging thing it's another selection pressure so you can say diseases and you must know that antibiotic is a human made selection pressure for bacteria we may have talked about the this in the immune system chapter that bacteria mutate pass. and become a uh, antibody hmm? is is antibody antibiotics a form of passive immunity or no because antibodies are oh okay i remember immunity. you got you received yes antibiotics are just the chemicals that we uh, engulf to support our immune system they are not the form of passive immunity passive immunity has to uh, have the antibodies has to include uh, we have to include the antibodies in it so antibiotics are not the form of uh, passive immunity they are just to support them now genetic variation within a population is uh, referring described uh, reference to genetic variation within a population some organisms of a population are able to live well better than other organisms because of the division of the selection pressure uh, the divisional genetic material let let's suppose 
let me bring let me remind you we studied a concept of uh, um, concept that why cross pollination is advantageous and the self pollination is harmful the reason of it was that the in the in the cross pollination we have we are mixing two different genetic materials and there is a high chance that we are going to get a variety of features that would make a make a plant able to survive better but with a re repetitive self pollination the plant is not going to um, survive for long because many of the weak features are going to be accumulated in the organisms produced as a result of self pollination so this uh, this is one of the best examples that two there are two uh, individuals of the same species one produced by the self pollination and one produced by the cross pollination now the cross pollination one is the fitter one which means that um, it it has more chances of survival so within the same species within the same organism there is a challenging a challenge of fitness and another very important point written over here, production of many offsprings what is the meaning of it can you explain this point production of many organisms uh, how is it how does it relate to the selection production of many offsprings so like it can um because like especially with animals not necessarily with humans uh if like a lot of mm -hmm. animals when they produce offspring it's like uh, some animals i don't know which ones like half of them don't survive or like 75 percent don't survive so if there's a chance that they can produce mm -hmm. many offspring at once that increases the chance mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. at least one or two offsprings will be will survive till basically going great yeah you're going great that's that's very good now the problem is let's say an organism a fish produces 500 eggs yeah. 250 of out of them are going to be uh, mm -hmm. like uh, hunted by the predator yeah. let's say the the 150 out of it one 150 out of them they are just uh, damaged because of like some sort of abrasive damage or they are non viable non viable means that they don't have enough food in them so they mm -hmm. can survive or so that maybe means another condition 150 of them die. so that basically means 100 100 are left, are left. then when they when they hatch and they grow, mm -hmm. so um they could there's mm -hmm. still a chance that they could get hunted so that's maybe like 50 more exactly hunted. yes to make it sure 30. that the genetic material keeps on Mm. Yeah. Yes, you are hundred percent right. To make it sure, organisms produce many offsprings. Then struggle for survival, including competition for resources. That is also now talking about the real natural selection that involves the competition. Obviously, the natural selection involves production of many organism. To like, it, it, it's just like it is just like what we do. That uh, okay, uh, let's purchase these things. Maybe we need it in the future. Similarly, producing many offspring that we, we maybe are going to need that in the future. Otherwise, the species would be finished. So the C point, now I'm about to uh, discuss the C point. The C point is as simple and as obvious than any other thing. If an organism wins the competition, it means it would survive. It is selected. It is selected to survive yet. It is not fit. This is very important statement that if an organism is uh, passing, let's say if an athlete is passing the qualifying round or, or of Olympics, it means that he's just passed the qualifying round. He is not he has not won the any medal. Similarly, if an organism has successfully faced a challenge and tackled it, it means it has been selected to survive, but it is not fitter enough. The fit one always means that this organism has transported or sorry, transferred its genetic material to the next generation. So competition is always for resources. Um, the competition obviously in, is it going to be in, in, uh, involving the uh, for same resources. Obviously competition is always for same resources. Competition occurs for the females. Competition occurs there for the uh, food source. Competition occurs there for the water source. Competition occurs there for a good 
hiding place for a good residence for a good den for a good nest for um, for, for a good structure of pollen for a good structure of pollen that can be trans transferred with the wind for a good structure of pollen that can cling to the insect all these are competitive features so um, similarly how the how great an insect look like uh, uh, that a female would select because female uh, females do the selection in the uh, animals and especially in the insects so they are going to select them the mate selection is one of the highest rated competition in the birds and insects very high competitions occur okay then uh individual better adapted okay now the thing is what is adaptation can you answer this when uh, an animal adapts to its surroundings hold on first of all read the statement and tell me do you remember this topic uh yeah Which the one you circled? Adaptation. Yeah, the one I circled. So in this term, it would be like uh, something like, um, you know, when the vaccine is injected, then you build memory cells. It's similar to that. No, 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 no. no. Did we study the antibiotic topic? Uh, no, I think we did. I guess we antibodies. did. Antibodies. Uh, you may be forgetting we did study the antibiotic but no problem we can touch that touch that again so that okay let me give you an idea i told you that when we use the uh, we use the antibiotic only against the bacteria because viruses don't have a cell so antibiotics cannot destroy them then i told you that antibiotics are applied on the bacteria antibiotics are applied on the bacteria uh, and uh, when we very frequently use the antibiotic that bacteria start developing resistant to it do you remember anything about it yeah i'm remembering now mm. okay no problem if you are forgetting we can touch this i was just looking at if you remember this then we can just give it a little uh, attention and then we can move forward anyways we can come back to this little okay this is about the selection so let's talk about this one right now i would come to the adaptation later see basically what happens that bacteria divide by binary fission the process of reproduction in bacteria is called as binary fission and what is that this is the cell of bacterium and it splits into two it splits into two at a very high rate. After every 20 minutes, a binary fission is uh, completed. It means, and you can check the formula, uh, you can um, uh, assess the formula, like n raised to power two. n means number of cycles, number of binary fissions occurring. Number of binary fissions occurring, and two is the power. So if one, has occurred two bacteria would be produced if two binary fissions have occurred four bacteria would be produced and so on so you can use this formula now this is an extremely this is an extremely high rate of reproduction extremely high rate of reproduction and it can cause it can and it does cause many mutations it does cause many mutations remember that bacteria cannot repair bacteria cannot repair mutations humans do repair mutations that is why they survive for long but the bacteria cannot repair mutations so they keep on mutating again and again and again and one of these mutations can be so so much like a bonus for the bacteria that the bacterium is now surviving against it surviving against what 
the bacterium is now surviving against the uh, the bacteria are now surviving against the antibiotic. Suppose that we apply the antibiotic at this level. We apply the antibiotic at this level. And this one would die. Every, like every offspring of it would die. Everyone is dying. All of them are dying. Even all the generation here is dying. This one, and this one also died. This one also died, but this is surviving. This is surviving, and now it would continue the generation no matter how many times, no matter how many times you are again going to use the antibiotic, it would survive. No matter how many times. And this happened to a very particular bacteria called as Staphylococcus. Aureus. This bacteria is technically present on our skin and uh, it never harms us. Initially, this Staphylococcus aureus is literally called as flesh eating bacteria if it enters into your body. And there is, uh, this was initially tackled with penicillin. With penicillin. But suddenly it got it, it started resisting the penicillin. Then we started, uh, we created a, a derivative of penicillin called as mesicillin. And after some time, it started resisting that again. So now we are naming this bacteria as mesicillin. Resistant Staphylococcus aureus. M R S A. I think you can recall the things. I do remember MRSA, but um, the other bit I don't. I forgot. Maybe need to revise it. Again. Okay, I would. Um, you didn't revise in the immune system chapter. I did, but oh, I. There's a chance. Hold on, hold on, hold on. There is a chance. There is a chance that. Oh yes, there is a chance that part has been excluded from that chapter and it's been included here. There is a chance. Okay, because we didn't really talk about this penicillin or methicillin, uh, flesh eating, we didn't talk about this. I don't remember at least. To every that is resistant to every antibiotic present. Methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus is a, is a super bug. You cannot like uh, kill it. So that is the problem. Now the problem is why a bacterium would reach to that level? would start mutating or start resist uh, would begin resistance would begin resistance against antibiotics this is a fact that scientists say about in the in, in the evolution that mutation Coincidentally, coincidentally, appear against a selection pressure. What does it mean? 
it means that the more a selection pressure is challenging the environment, the higher the chance that the mutation would appear in the relevant gene. Let me write down that the more the selection pressure is challenging the organism, the higher chances that the mutation would occur in the relevant gene. In the relevant gene. So it means that the more you use an antibiotic, frequently using an antibiotic, frequently using antibiotics, antibiotics can lead to bacterial resistance. Then frequently using a single antibiotic same antibiotic now there is another problem if you are using the antibiotic same antibiotic again and again and again and it is going to be a severe there there are going to be severe consequences because they are going to resist it number three using antibiotic in antibiotics in viral infections in viral infection remember the antibiotics always work against the cell antibiotics is against a cell and what are viruses viruses are acellular particles so you cannot use the antibiotics against them so, and when you use the antibiotics in viral infections, the uh, bacteria are going to get, bacteria that are present in your body are going to get uh, opportunity to get uh, resistant to it. Then, not completing the suggested course of antibiotic, the uh, prescribed course of antibiotic. Once you don't antibiotic, leading to leading to start leading to start the antibiotic consumption again. Because let's say you were supposed to be taking the antibiotic um, for seven days. You left it for five days in five days and uh, the infection reappeared now you have to use the same thing again and in the meantime they can get resistant to the things so this is something really important to know that uh, we need to be very careful while using the antivirus got it Yes. Okay, now we'll be talking about this one in the next lesson. Moving to this one, then to we would reach to this one. And in this, I would give you some uh, parts to read because those are basically for reading. Okay, you got it, selection, you got, uh, understood the concept? Uh, yeah. Hmm. Like the features and then after this, biotechnology. We are almost there.